Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching and welcome to the latest pick a card reading that I'm doing this week. Now, this week I don't have a topic because I ended up publishing a Masters of Starlight episode, Louise Hay, which you can take a look at if you feel like. And I've also been so busy working on the November Outlook, so I didn't end up covering the Earth element that I thought I was going to cover this week. I will likely do that next week. So next week we might be back working with a topic, but this week it's just a straight up reading. You can choose between group one, group two, group three. And I think I'm going to title this something like, what do you need to know right now? So go ahead and choose your group and I'll see you in your reading. All right, so if you chose group number one, let's take a look at your cards. And as with all of my readings, I encourage everybody to use your own intuition as you look at the cards, see, take in the colors, the symbols, see what comes in for you. This is Lord Ganesha here. How beautiful. And that is a great card to get from that deck. So you're off to an amazing start. <laughs> but yeah, use your own intuition. Why is that so important? Because there'll be one or two messenger, messages or maybe even the whole thing that you really need to hear uh, this time around and only you will know what that is. Okay, we've got the lovers in reverse. Really, really beautiful. We've got the strength card upright. represents Leo. You got a lot of Leo energy in this reading guys. It's amazing. Knight of Pentacles upright. We've got the Sun. Look at that. That's a very Leo card. So I'm counting this as Leo again because the Sun is the Lord of Leo and this is a very happy card, Oracle card. And then we've got, look at that, Leo again. And this is, it says a Zobra. I'll be reading from the book uh, on this deck because the book is outstanding in this one and the messages are always really good. So I'm gonna read direct for you from this deck. All right, so what do I see here? What I see here for you guys is that, and this is turning out to be a bit of a typical group one kind of thing. So I don't know if, some of you are consistently always choosing group one, but um, what I'm noticing is in these readings is that group one is manifesting something huge. It's really, really, really big. And I know this because we've got two major arcana here and we've got a knight of pentacles here. So it's not a small card that's come through. None of these are small, in fact, they're all huge. That is huge. We've got a number nine, okay? So what you, the kind of prosperity that you're bringing through is massive. Um, and I feel like it is prosperity. It's like you want to take a leap in lifestyle. You want to, you know, really manifest that next type of life. And it involves all kinds of things. Yes, it involves money. I think it involves love and creativity and all kinds of things. It's all kind of, kinds of abundance and prosperity that you're wishing to create. And not just for yourself, but for other people as well. That's why it's so huge, right? So it's fantastic what you're doing. And through this spread and through these cards, I believe the divine is stepping in and is saying, well done, you are doing a fantastic job. You're being responsible, you're working really hard, you're being practical, you're saving, you're not being rash and crazy. You're doing really, really well. You you know, um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the hare and the tortoise. Like you might be making slow progress and you might be feeling like it's taking a really long time, but know that you are doing so well. And I believe the divine really wants to pat you on the back um, and say that you're doing fantastic. Now, if you feel like you haven't manifested it as yet, don't worry because it's on the other side and through all your actions now, you keep making it better. You keep refining it, you keep adding to it, you keep improving you know, that abundance, that vision that you're wanting to bring through. 
It's not an overnight job, it's going to take time. And I think you know that as well. I think you're very aware that this is not a quick, simple, fast thing because we've got these big numbers here. We've got number nine here. As I say, we've got major arcana here. We've got a knight here, which is quite high up. We've got number one, but we've got number 11 here, a master number. So it's quite incredible what you're doing and know that like, you're making it, it's happening, right? And you are very creative because we've got the sun here. So all of your work, all that you're doing, and you are being incredibly strong, okay? So you're being incredibly strong and you're being diligent, you're putting in the work, you're doing everything and it's gonna come in and you just gotta keep having faith and you just gotta keep knowing that, and I'm sure it is coming in in bits, but know that the totality um, of that great thing that you're creating and working on, it's going to happen, okay? Now, the lovers is in reverse. What's this saying to me? All right, this is not to do with your love life. I'm not seeing anything love life related here. How I'm seeing this is that there's um, a slight blockage, perhaps, in your second chakra, right? So that's really the only blemish in this reading. It's so positive, it's so strong. Three, Leo, three times. I've never had that happen in a reading. Like, <laughs> this is amazing. And this card as well. Like, this is such a strong spread. There's a, just a tiny, tiny blemish here, and it's, I believe it's in your second chakra, and I believe the way to resolve it, so this could be a slight issue that you're having one-on-one -on -one with somebody. It could be that. It could be some slight blockage to do with your creativity. Perhaps you're not acting or you're being slow to act. It could be something like that, but there is a lot of fire here, so I feel like that's all gonna be fine. The thing, the way to solve this and to get this upright and to get this all fantastic is just to really sit with your second chakra and work with it. Um, meditate and visualize bright orange. Um, you know, you can eat oranges or have carrot juice in the morning. I've been juicing and it's fantastic. Um, I have carrot and beetroot juice and it's really, really good. Uh, so that's one of the things you can be doing. You can be journaling, you can be writing down your feelings, just getting it out on paper. Um, definitely writing down your feelings um, on paper and ripping it up, getting rid of it. Um, if that's something you need to do, play with color play as well play energy is so important okay that will help this as well inner child type stuff maybe you need to take a day off and maybe you know watch cartoons that you used to like when you were a kid or something you know it's it's like play energy is is what's needed maybe if your work is quite you know numerical or computer based or whatever maybe you need to get some like um, colored sharpies and draw and just be silly and you know do something really different um, it's something like that it's some second chakra type thing and it just feels like they need to be yeah I don't know maybe a little bit more fun in your life or something along those lines let's take a look at what's happening here this is such a beautiful card and what I did was I looked it up and I'm going to read it out for you now so it says here the 11th mansion is located in the constellation of Leo. Ptolemy said that the nature of this mansion holds the energy of Saturn and Venus. Okay, yeah, there's a seriousness, right? Yeah, because I'm getting a vibe that you need to play, okay? And that's what's gonna sort this out. Um, what does it say here? The traditional meaning of this mansion speaks about prestige, mastery, and worship, which emulate the nobility of a lion. That is so amazing because look, we've got the lion here. I mean, that seriously, these are totally different decks. For me to draw this exact sequence, I'm just amazed. Like, wow, <laughs> these things just amaze me. Okay, so then we've got, it's talking about the lion, right? Um, emulate the nobility of a lion. The powers of this mansion were used to request authority and arise especially when it comes to a job position. Yep, this is definitely about your career and your work in the world and what it is that you're manifesting. So we're looking for, we're looking at a rise here. I think it's coming in for you. Um, this mansion encourages us to be bold and fearless, to prove others we are deserving of respect and admiration, to truly believe in who we are. 
that is fantastic. Um, what does it say in the fine print here? May your strength be acknowledged. So respect shines among others. Look at that, the word strength. The word strength. I mean, it just couldn't be more perfect. This is such a good reading. So if you feel like, you know, I'm, I'm working so hard and where is it? You know, where's my millions or whatever it is that you're looking for? Um, acknowledge the abundance in your life now. Okay, the big stuff is coming in. We're all going to have to be a little bit patient because there's a massive reordering in the cosmos right now, especially over the next two years. Um, there's a massive reordering. So the thing, the great prosperity that you're bringing through, it might take time. And I'm getting that from this card here. There's a slowness always about the Knight of Pentacles. So don't be in a rush to see the physical evidence the this is evidence for you here right now of what's beyond the veil that you are polishing and clocking up and cultivating and creating you're making it it's looking more beautiful all the time just look at this spread so don't worry it's there and it's just about being in the now working on that second chakra working on all of your chakras making sure you're doing your yoga you know, you've got to be healthy, you've got to be physically fantastic so that you can enjoy all of this when it comes in. So take time out um, if you need to and rest. I recently did an episode, Master's episode on Louise Hay. She talked about how there was like six months to a year or something where she didn't have any work. And she said, I knew that I would become busy. So she said she would like go to the beach every day. Um, for several months or something and she said because I knew that work was going to come in and this is that kind of spread that if it's taking time to come in let's keep the faith know that it's coming know that um, you know you're manifesting signs and information and you're manifesting like a reward from the divine the divine is coming in right now saying good on you you're doing fantastic Okay, there's so much yellow and upright and sun energy and confidence and you know third chakra is fantastic i would say it's just the second one could do with a little bit of um working on so group one this is a sensational spread i'm hoping that you're um acknowledging your current abundance right uh, because more is on the way so i hope this has been a good reading for you we are now gonna, oh, please do comment because I love to hear how these go. And, um, you know, please do like and share and all that kind of thing. And we are now gonna meet group number two. Hi there, group number two. Let's take a look at your cards. Now, as with any one of my readings, I always ask everyone, use your intuition, see what comes in for you and also, be discriminating with the messages that I'm going to bring in. See which message you're meant to hear or which message you're meant to discard. Okay, so look at that. First up, Surya, the sun god. So beautiful. I love this image. Let's take a look closer. The artwork is just so wonderful. Gosh, isn't that lovely? It's a good start. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, I remember your spread. Okay. You've got an interesting one here, group two. You've got the Knight of Swords in reverse. You've got the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. And you have the Ten of Swords. Don't let this card freak you out. It looks bad, but it's not that bad. <laughs> I've drawn this card so many times. <laughs> and whenever I do, I always feel like, yay, I finished something. Right, that is definitely one of the ways uh, of reading the Ten of Swords. Okay, now we've got this, another card to not freak out over. Storm Morning. <laughs> I've had this one as well. I'll tell you what all this means, don't worry. If it doesn't look good to you, you will see. This is all just our spiritual training ground. This is all good in the end. All right, now what do we have here? Okay, we've got Aries. 
are not roots and foundations okay so really interesting spread this time group two and what I would say is that you do have some some things going on um, the most promising card in fact out of all of these is this one this is the best this is just such a prize and we're going to talk about this at the very end but let's take a look at the situation that you're going through basically the sun god is here to offer you protection and healing you are going through possibly possibly a bit of a spiritual test um, let's see the knight of swords reversed basically you're at the end of a big cycle you might be quite burnt out that's what the ten of swords is representing this time you might also be feeling kind of um, a bit unmotivated with this card being here in the reverse position this card can be like no direction that kind of thing it feels like you've probably come to some level of mastery of whatever it is that you've been doing it's kind of, it's kind of got the slightly the feeling of the job that um, you've been doing for too long and it's no longer challenging you that's kind of the feel that I'm getting from this it's like you know you are a bit restless you are kind of wondering what's next you are like you know um, perhaps wanting this phase to, to come to an end and I'll tell you what it is there's a there is a dynamic that has something to do with your work life or career that that is at an end I would say um, because there is you have manifested a new beginning we're going to come to this in a moment this is good but the rest of this isn't so great when I drew this card some time ago the first time I drew it I remember everything was fantastic in my life and I was like oh no and I saw this and I didn't like seeing it and then I think it was like a week or so later maybe a couple of weeks I had like this pretty big argument with somebody and it was okay it, it brushed over um, it wasn't a problem I was fine and that's the thing I get the sense that that's going to be the same deal for you you're protected during this okay you've got the Sun God right the Sun God is protecting you through these this stormy action going on here you're going to be fine maybe some people around you aren't going to be fine we do have this in reverse this can be like when you've got swords um, in reverse it can be a sort of argumentative type energy going on there could be some arguments at work there could be some arguments at home or something like that to deal with but what I can tell you is we've got more swords energy than earth energy it's gonna blow over quick okay so it's not going to be a problem whatever it is that you're going to have to face and deal with know that it's your spiritual training ground it's just giving you another opportunity to show the divine that hey i'm doing my work you know i'm remembering what i'm learning i'm putting it into practice right so you know i've got full faith in you that you're going to do that because you are going to complete something there is a dynamic that's going to complete and that's going to be a good thing now let's take a closer look at what's happening here because this is a jewel and I'm going to read it out word for word um, from the booklet because it is so good hopefully I can hold this still while I read it out at the same time right so it says the first mansion represents the horns of the constellation of Aries a burst of energy and inspiration for a new journey or chapter in our lives look at how perfectly that coincides with this right the end of a cycle you've manifested the end of a cycle literally we've got the card right here to prove it and you've equally manifested this beautiful new beginning you've also manifested protection as you go through this transition okay so there's nothing for you to worry about or fear 
you just got to go with it, right? Sometimes they say, what is it? The only way out is through. I really like that phrase. I can't remember who said it, but if you Google it, you'll find out. Um, let's have a look. A burst of energy and inspiration for a new journey or chapter in our lives. Ptolemy said that the nature of this mansion holds the energy of Mars and Saturn. Wow, so you have been going through some tough stuff. Every beginning starts with an idea and the purpose of moving towards something. Whether you are seeking to accomplish a new goal or to dive deep into yourself, this mansion indicates a new circle. It says a new circle, not cycle. Okay, a new circle that is about to start. A special significance that is to be highlighted here, though, is that every new beginning also means there is an ending. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. We've got that right here. And we've got a bit of an indicator as to what it is. And I would say it's could be work related, could be that you're tired of what you're doing, could be some argumentative thing that's going on. Uh, every beginning there is also an ending, yep. As we move forward in our journey, there are things we may need to let go of in order to keep expanding. This is why this mansion of the moon has a double-edged nature one needs to be mindful of. As we reach higher levels of consciousness, Cherishing our beginnings is essential to understanding where we came from. Yeah, that's so true. And one of the things I've thought um, recently is that the confidence you hold when you're in the deep, dark place is actually the sweetest. Like it's the best confidence. It's like that scene in Life is Beautiful when the dad character, he marches off to be executed and he smiles at his son. He's like... You know he's in a really bad situation but he's he's got this confidence he's got this air of confidence about him i just love that and it's like that confidence of knowing that i've been in a storm before and i've come out just fine and that confidence of knowing you, you can do it again and, and the confidence of knowing you really have manifested that new beginning it's right here right it's on the table it's literally on the table so you know there is definitely a new beginning here um, it's a little bit, yeah, phoenix rising from the ashes, that kind of thing. But I always like the closure and the completion of this kind of cycle or, um, you know, also David Hawkins talks about the fact that when we let go of our fear or when we face our stuff or when we go through the challenges that are indicated here in these cards, once we've done it, we never have to do it again, right? And we can walk forward. And we're going to have new things coming on the horizon. So hi, group two, just really quickly, I wanted to talk a bit more about that David Hawkins quote because I'm editing the film now and I've just realized I didn't quote it exactly as I should have done. I should have said that what David Hawkins teaches is that when we let go of our fear, we've let go of that fear for good kind of thing that there's like a set amount of fear that we have that's kind of his belief so it doesn't mean that we won't encounter the same situation again we might encounter the same situation again but there'll be less fear within us and we'll be very different with that same situation again okay so i hope i clarified that okay and i hope that that's now clear but if you have any questions you can also ask me um, in the comments below and hopefully i can get back to you all right i'm with the reading i love this and i love that in the guidance for this one it talks about a new idea is where it begins right it begins in an idea and think of this card look at this spread and notice that everything here is a bit of a challenge except for this which is offering protection but this small card you've got this small little segment that's lit up and that's kind of saying hey this is it's going to be the, your future is going to be amazing and it's going to start with an idea so you can rest that's the other thing i'm getting a strong feeling that you might be burnt out and you might need to really take some time out and do that take some proper time out i'm going to do that this weekend i'm not going to do any work i'm tired <laughs> and um you know in the tiredness and in the rest and in the doing nothing an idea might come and that might be the beginning of the most beautiful new chapter uh, of our lives so group two 
I wish you well, you know, and um, you are very strong. And I think it, whatever challenge it is that you're going through, you're going to, well, you have manifested a new beginning. So don't worry. It's all going to come clear. It's all going to come good. All right. Well, you're very welcome to um, leave me a comment below and uh, let me know how this went. And as always, please do like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi, group three. Let's take a look at your cards. As with all of my readings, please do use your intuition as we go along and see what resonates, see what comes into your intuition, see which messages resonate with you and discard the rest. Basically, there'll be some message in here that you're meant to hear at this time. All right, let's take a look at this. This is beautiful. Rebirth. Let's look at this closely because they are just so stunning, these images. Wow. I love this kind of artwork. It's just, just stare at it for ages. I've got in my, um, in my place, I've got these wonderful pictures of um, Ram and Sita anyway. They're, they're just in this kind of artwork style. I really like it. Okay, what's next? <laughs> oh no, I dropped one. Hold on. Uh. Hmm, I dropped this one. I'll tell you which one I dropped. I wonder if that adds to the symbolism. Oh yeah, you got four cards tarot-wise this time because this one popped out. Um, this is the Five of Swords upright. This just popped up out of nowhere. So I was like, okay, you guys are getting this and three others. So I'll be putting this on top of the ones that came. These are the ones that came. So you got the Five of Cups. But I will be putting this on top because I think it needs to be on top. Um, I feel like this is a minor issue, but we'll get into that. Ace of Pentacles upright, one of the best cards you can possibly get. I love this card. <laughs> Who doesn't love a bit of Ace of Pentacles? And we've got the Justice card. I remember what yours was about, this one. It's a good one. The Temple Path. I had to read the book for this. Um, really good card. And it basically is representing your spiritual path through life. That was what I took out of it in the context of this reading, right? So, but I'll talk you through a bit more in a moment. And out of these beautiful cards, you got this one. And I will read the full description of this um, because it is so beautiful and so perfect with this reading i'm just amazed this time the cards as they came they're like every single group they're just like yeah so amazing that when you shuffle and you get the exact right combination like they all sync up it's just amazing okay so what am i seeing here i've seen quite a lot of things um five of cups so we've got potentially there's some situation that you've been through recently and again I'm getting a work vibe it's interesting for all the groups that I've been oh, hang on a second there we go for all the groups I've been working with it there's not much romance happening at the moment so that's okay um, this is quite a bit about work as well I do believe and I'll tell you why I think that so I feel like you have gone through some kind of situation possibly could be to do in your romantic life this is emotion here but there's something where Maybe you feel like you've um, something hasn't gone so well, okay? Like there might be a bit of loss or something or just a, um, something hasn't gone right. Something hasn't gone so well. We've got, but I feel like, and that's why I want to put this card underneath this one because... It is, this all is to do with your work. And this is, a, this is a card about work, but it's kind of like a card of ambition at all costs. And what this whole reading is asking you to do is to be weighing up what career and money and wealth and all that means to you. Like, is it worth it? 
okay so is what worth it now we have to get into this because i'm like i'm trying to read the energy as well and i'm trying to figure out all these things now you've got good stuff coming you've got a rebirth it's there's nothing bad going on here it's all very good i also got the sense this is a strong card here and this is this situation whatever this was has been actually part of your spiritual path this your your spiritual path wanted you to experience i'm gonna let those focus your spiritual path has wanted you to experience something like this this kind of emotion this kind of feeling your path has brought you kind of along a trail specifically for this experience and you, you might be thinking why well, you know surely the spiritual path should lead me to all the good things and all the wonderful things no it it's there to train you it's there to build you it's there to help you grow right so it can lead you directly to an experience that is not so pleasant i feel like this experience it might have something to do with your work it could be emotional it could be to do with your partner or family or something like that it could be um, as well but i do feel like this is taking a back seat and i don't think that this is too bad uh, even though it might feel bad in the moment but it's almost like maybe you're kind of wanting to overwork or um, work too much or maybe you're thinking oh if i be really ambitious and just work 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 i can resolve this right so that's one way of reading what's going on here because there is quite you know you are working hard and you are clocking up the wealth and the money and you are doing well but then we've got this card stepping in sort of saying well hang on a minute how hard do you want to work and is it worth it right is all that hard work you know is it is it really worth it um, and what is suffering in your life as a result of doing too much work if you're just about work maybe there's a part of you inside that is suffering a little bit um, that's another way of, of looking at, at some of this but i feel like your spiritual path is wanting you to explore this so it's kind of needed to bring you a bit of this right um it's nice to have the picture here because the picture sort of tells a thousand words and that's why these readings are so good because and why they apply to a lot of people as well okay so I, what i'm seeing is that you, you've got some weighing up to do you've got to see what's worth it and maybe it might be worth it to not work so much or to not be too i want to say greedy or ambitious right um, not that you are you're not that but there's something about this situation that's asking you to weigh up all these things to weigh up what's worth it and maybe you know um maybe not doing so much is is the better thing right because maybe abundance lies in you know in your health right and um and your emotional health as well you know it's important that our family lives or uh, and our work group or whatever it's important that we feel happy and good at work that is important um or maybe the situation is that you're you know you're having to weigh up maybe it is time to leave the place where you're working and there is a rebirth here for you right so maybe it's about that maybe it's about recognizing that yeah it's something to do with with overworking i do think or thinking that was another th thought i had that thinking that work and the money is going to make me really really happy okay that is that's got to be something that you've got to look at is it is this level of abundance and this kind of work where perhaps not everyone's happy and perhaps you're not happy right is it worth it it's something like this going on and let's have a read of this because this card really ties it all together let me um hang on 
Let me focus that and I'll read it out because it's so good, this. So it says here, the fixed star, the fixed star as as Medisk, as Medisk. I hope I've said that right. <laughs> I'm probably not saying these things right. Uh, is found in the constellation of Leo. Ptolemy said that the essence of this fixed star is a resemblance of Saturn and Jupiter. It's fascinating, right? Because we've got Saturn and Jupiter quite strong in the sky at the moment. This is a timeless reading, so you could be watching this, but I mean, these two are gonna to be together for a while. Well, Jupiter's coming up, I think, too. Is he coming up to be with Saturn? I think so. Anyway, um, as, Mediske, as Mediske is situated above the stern of the ship, also known as Argo Navis, I hope I pronounce all those right, I don't know. But anyway, we're getting to the good bit now. The fixed star reminds us, this fixed star reminds us that the connection between our body, mind and soul is our vehicle towards enlightenment. Look at that, we've got this, the spiritual path, the temple path, okay? So, God, this is so good. And this deck really is great at tying in lots of disparate cards, okay? Uh, so yeah, my body, mind, and soul is our vehicle towards enlightenment. The principle behind spiritual alchemy is to reach purity, gold, by finding harmony within. During this process, we will have to remove the excess and merge the elements that will help us attain our purpose. This fixed star is a reminder that you are an alchemist and that you possess the power to turn your ambition into abundance. Look at that. See, ambition which is exactly what this card is all about, into abundance. So you've got the power to, yes, to turn your ambitions into abundance, but we've got this here, which to me is kind of saying, you wanna be weighing up your ambition and your abundance. What's worth it to you? you know, is it worth it? What if your body is crying out for some rest? Okay, what if it's your body? Because this is talking about your body, soul, and mind need to be all together, right? They need to be all healthy and all together. What's worth it to you, right? We've got a rebirth here. There's a new beginning here. There's something really nice. Let's have a read of the back of this so that you've got the full guidance. For one who is born, death is certain. For one who has died, birth is certain. Since you cannot avoid either fate, you should not lament. Oh, that's so beautiful. Lament, that's exactly this, right? And look, we all go through this. I've gone through a lot of this. Like, it's okay to lament a bit, you know? It's okay to um, release. If you feel in a place where you feel safe and you can release and you can you maybe need to just cry it out, just let it go. Maybe you need to um, write things down, rip it up. That's always a good thing. It's all okay, right? And, you know, whatever it is, that difficult thing, I think you were kind of meant to go through it, but there's definitely abundance. And it's just about, it's, I think that you're in quite a luxurious position really, because, you're getting the opportunity to weigh up uh, ambition versus reward, um, you know, and there's a new beginning here. So I think you're doing great. And I think um, this is a really good reading. And I think the divine is definitely watching over you. And that's this card is strong. This There's a kind of message coming through to say that you're doing fantastic as well okay and that don't be so hard on yourself and that you know any time that you need to take a bit of time out do it and this card here i mean this is talking about the fact that you're an alchemist and you've got the ability i'm gonna read it again you've got the ability and the power to turn your ambition into abundance and ultimately this is here for you like abundance we're talking major abundance it's on the table so you know and here's the funny thing sometimes we think we have to work really hard to bring it through and sometimes when we do less we bring more of this through so i think that's also what you're being asked to look at maybe you need to do less maybe you need to do less charge more right have you experimented with that 
Maybe that's the rebirth. Maybe that's a new thing. And absolutely, I was thinking about in terms of if you're self-employed, it's going to be about working, fine-tuning that, working out, okay, maybe I need to do less work, charge more, right? It, it's about weighing up. It's about, okay, maybe, you know, you're working for yourself, you're working really long hours, but maybe you want to take three days off a week, right? Do that, you know, or take time out when you need to. You're the boss, right? Um, so, yeah. I hope this has been a good reading for you, group number three. Please let me know in the comments below. Um, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time.